Hey, what's up everyone? This is my first ever YouTube video and my goal with this channel is to bring you guys some cool tech projects that I'm working on. You can expect to see everything from artificial intelligence to robotics here in the new future. Today, however, I'm gonna start with a tutorial on how to trade stocks on a Raspberry Pi. First things first, let me lead with saying that I am not a financial advisor of any sort and none of this is considered financial advice. I am not liable if any of you knuckleheads gamble away your life savings on the stock market, okay? Now that we got that out of the way, this video is split up into three main parts. The first part is setting up the Raspberry Pi initially for those who haven't used one before. So feel free to skip to part two if you've set one up before. The second part is a walkthrough of the code needed to trade stocks through Python. And the third part is getting the code run on the Raspberry Pi to trade without our input. I'll include the starting times of each part in the description so you guys can skip around as needed. Sound good? Okay, let's start. For those of you who don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's a microcomputer. Think of it like an entire desktop computer contained on a small, single board. It's great for a wide range of tasks from running your own Plex server all the way to controlling custom-made robots. There's a wide range of models out there, but for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the 3B Plus model. I haven't tested this out on the 4, but I imagine it would work just fine there as well. Now, because I'm going to be running this constantly, I got a case that keeps the Pi from overheating with a, a fan and a bunch of heat sinks. Plus, I just think it kind of looks really cool. One other important part to get for the Pi is a micro SD card. Now, I use an 8 gigabyte card, and honestly, it's worked fine for me, but you can always go for a bigger size card if you wanted to. Uh, links for the Pi, SD card, and the case I use in the description below. I'm not sponsored by either, but I will get a little bit of kickback if you use the links to buy them. Other hardware that you might need for this video is a, a power cord for the Pi, an ethernet cord, a keyboard and mouse, and finally a monitor. Uh, and with that, let's get started setting up the Pi. Okay, so this part's going to be pretty cursory, just intended as a sort of review for everyone and a brief introduction for those of you that are brand new to the Raspberry Pi. So I always direct new users to the Raspberry Pi Foundation's own website. They have tons of awesome projects and helpful tutorials to get started. This one in particular lays everything out nicely. Starting with everything you'll need, which is basically just everything I mentioned a moment ago, you know, power supply, micro SD card, keyboard and mouse, and a screen. Now, the only, I wouldn't say challenging exactly, perhaps intimidating, part about setting up a new Raspberry Pi would be flashing the operating system on a micro SD card. Fortunately, there's an imager that makes this process super easy. Just download it and it'll walk you through formatting your SD card and, and installing Raspbian. That's the default operating system for Raspberry Pis and the one I use for this tutorial. And that's about it. Well, okay, there is slightly more than that, but you just did the hardest part. The rest of the tutorial just walks you through what cables to put in where and how to power it up. It'll ask you all sorts of questions like what language and time zone you want, but I find that to be pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, guys, this is a very cursory overview and I can definitely go into more deep dive if you guys want. Uh, and I'll make sure to put the tutorial link in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Okay, so now assuming that the Raspberry Pi is all set up, let's put it aside for a moment and dive into the code. So let's turn to the actual code. For this tutorial, we're going to use Alpaca to execute our trades. Alpaca is a brokerage that has a robust and free API for commission-free algorithmic trading. Not sponsored by them in any way, but I will have a referral link in the description if you want to use them. Now, Alpaca allows you to test your testing strategies using a paper account before trading with actual money using a live account. For this tutorial, I'll first go over how to execute trades using a paper account and then how to switch over to a live account with a couple of tweaks to trade using actual money. So to start, you'll need to create an account with Alpaca and grab a few keys before you can submit any trades. Once you've created your account, you can find your API key and API secret key here. Similarly, you can access your API keys for your live account here. Once you have these, I would add these to a secrets file mostly because it's good practice, but also to protect it from being uploaded to a repo. Here's an example of how to set up that secrets file. Make sure to remove spaces around the equal sign, and you can also include other API keys you might need, such as, I don't know, Alpha Vantage or IEX. Those are both services that provide stock information and have their own advantages and disadvantages. You're going to have to change the base URL depending on whether you are testing in a paper account or you're using the live account. This is the paper base URL here, and to switch it to live, all you need to do is remove the paper dash. 
and of course replace your paper API keys with your live API keys. Okay, so when starting a new program, I always get in the habit of setting up a main function. And I call the said main function. Next, we're going to have to access those API keys we stored in that secrets file. There are many ways of accessing them, and you can go with whichever way works best for you, but I've found a quick and simple way is just to instantiate the keys as global variables. To do that, let's copy the variables and declare them as globals not just here in the function we're going to create, but also as empty strings above the main function. So the way this new function is going to work is it's going to open up the secrets file, parse the text, and separate out the API keys by the equal signs. Once it has them isolated, it can set the corresponding global variables. So here we read in the file, remove all export phrases, and split the file based on new lines. Now, since we know the order of each variable in the secrets file, we can set our global variables to match. This envvars variable is basically just a list of every line in the secrets file, and we can then split the line itself based on the equal sign to get our API keys. Let's go ahead and call that function in main here, as well as instantiate our globals. Now we need to import the alpaca API and create an API object by feeding in our global key variables. At the time of recording this video, the API version is currently 2, so we'll set it here to be v2, but it might have changed in the time since, so make sure to use the current version. From here, we can go ahead and submit a limit order to buy a stock for us. Let's make our example limit order for, say, one AMD stock at a max price of $60, and that expires at the end of the day. If we wanted to then sell this stock, we could use the same limit order call, but change the side to sell instead. Similarly, we can switch this from a limit to a market trade. By the way, in case you don't know the difference, a limit trade allows you to set the minimum price you want to sell at, or conversely a maximum price to buy at. So if you set a limit buy price of $5, it will only be filled if Alpaca can get you that stock for $5 or less. A market trade, on the other hand, just sells or buys at the current market price for the stock. Anyway, going back to what we were doing before, we're now ready to execute our code. Remember to fill in your secrets file with your API keys. Okay, so let's run this. And it ran with no errors. And if we navigate back to the dashboard, we can see that the order was filled. Let's refresh, and yep, there it is. We can see it listed in our portfolio and down here in our ordered history. Also, we can see it's now listed in our paper positions. And we now have one closed order in our paper orders. Anyway, I kind of just jumped to this ordering example out of the gate because there are probably some of you who just want to know how to submit buy and sell orders through Alpaca's API and you want to take it from here. So if you're one of those people, you can jump ahead if you want. But uh, for the rest of you, I've actually created a ready-to-use repository to install on the Raspberry Pi that I'll walk you guys through now. First off, I made the order call into its own simple function to encapsulate it. We might end up using this order function a bunch of times, so I kept the options open and kept all the parameters we have available in case we change our mind. This also lets us use this same function for all of our buy and sell orders. Also, notice that I'm putting this in another file titled support.py. Think of this as a file that holds all of the functions we may use a lot. Now since we are preparing this to run on the Raspberry Pi, this will need to run in a loop, which is why we have this while true statement here. Now if we expand this and take a look inside, we can see we have an example list of stocks to trade, our time zone set to Eastern Standard Time, and a support function call to something called isTradingHours. We can find that function in the support file here. Basically, it checks to see if the current time is between 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and also is not either a Saturday or Sunday. This means it's probably trading time. I say probably only because this doesn't take into account any holidays the exchanges have off 
or if the exchanges close early. Which reminds me, once you start trading live, you can actually just use your Alpaca Live API key to access Polygon's API for all kinds of information. And the reason I bring this up is because they conveniently have a call for both incoming market holidays and market status that could be used to supplement or totally replace the is trading hours function in the repo. Anyway, going back to the trading strategies file, we can see that our next line is for a for loop looping through the list of stocks we declared up here, declaring our alpaca API object, and calling our trading strategy here. If we navigate to that, we can see that I left almost all of it blank, but I'll go through an example strategy when we install this on the Pi in the next section. Finally, you'll notice that the whole main function is basically wrapped on a try except clause, which then logs the errors in a .txt file for debugging purposes. There's a make clean command in the make file to remove all .txt files you create as well. Oh, and if it's not market hours, there is a call to a wait function to pause for 15 minutes. Lastly, I've added some more helper functions to the support.py file that you might find useful, but by all means, you don't have to use them. In addition to the order function and is trading hours function, there's a function to tell if you've traded a stock in a specific time period. This is useful to avoid being flagged as a pattern day trader, for example. The next couple of functions are actually just utilized by this first function, but there is a useful function here that'll take in order information and record it in an SQLite database locally for your records and maybe some post analytics. The next two functions are retrieving the last bought price for a stock and a check to see if you currently own a specific stock. And of course, the wait function I mentioned earlier. And that's it for the demo repo. Let's move to the last section and get this all running on the Raspberry Pi. Now that we've finished going over our code, let's head back to our Raspberry Pi and install it. You can clone the repo straight onto the Pi. Remember to create your secrets file in the same folder and populate it with your Alpaca API keys. We'll then need to create and activate a virtual environment. Once we have the virtual environment set up and activated, all we have to do is run the make install command to recursively install all the requirements needed. This will take a while, so I'm going to skip ahead and pick up when it finishes. Okay, now that our requirements are installed, the next step is to fill in our trading strategy. Let's open up tradingstrategies.py in Vim and scroll down to where we will fill in our buying strategy. You may have to sudo apt install vim first if you haven't already. Or you can just use a different editor of your choice. It doesn't have to be vim. Anyway, as an example trading strategy, let's say that if we don't currently own any AMD or Apple stocks, then buy one share each. It's a super simple strategy, just for demo purposes of course, and I'm not recommending anyone buy or not buy either stock. Also, this is only an example strategy for buying a stock, but in your actual trading strategy, there will also be a selling component. So let's implement that here in Vim and run it to see what we get. First, remember that we can check if we currently own a stock with our support function aptly named currently own this stock by sending the alpaca API object as well as the stock ticker. So down here, we have two rather simple cases. If we have the stock already, we'll just print out this print statement to let us know. And if we don't have the stock, then submit a trade order. Now, I'm kind of cheating here because I already know this should buy an Apple stock, so I know the limit price to set it at ahead of time. Ideally, you would get the current price from your API of choice and perform your own analysis on it to decide what price to buy at, but this is just an example after all. So let's fill out our last few parameters and set our time and force parameter to equal GTC, which stands for good till canceled. And there we go. Now that that's done, let's save and quit Vim and we can run it. Fantastic. So it looks like it correctly found that we already had an AMD stock and hit our print statement as intended. However, it also looks like I left in a pesky wait statement, so I'll fast forward and pick up when that finishes. Okay, wait statement is finished, and yep, it purchased the Apple stock just as intended. 
We can verify with Alpaca to see that because we already bought one stock in AMD earlier, our Pi only submitted a new trade for one Apple stock. Just like before, we can find our new order in order history and looks like it was filled at a price of 318.85. Again, we can go to our paper positions to see our current stocks and we can see our new closed order for one Apple stock in paper orders. So with that, we've now made our first stock trades on a Raspberry Pi. For those of you that are still watching, pat yourself on the back for making it this far. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you want to see in future videos? I'm thinking of showcasing how to take what we just did and deploying it to AWS, but let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.